Hello everyone. This is Dr. Vineet Kumar Rai, working as Associate Professor in Department of Pharmaceutics, ISF College of Pharmacy, Moga Punjab. In today's lecture, I'll discuss about the intellectual property rights in pharmacy. As the name indicates, this topic contains three words, that is intellectual property and rights. And the center point is property. Here, the property means something you own, like money, a piece of land, ornament, house, cars, etc., etc. But here, I'm not talking about these kinds of properties. I'm talking about the property which is the creation of your mind. And that can be any chemical entity that you have been developed or discovered, any product you have developed, like tablet, capsule, or something, uh, parentologist form, any medical device you have designed or developed, any trademark you have developed. So these are the properties of your intellect. That is why it is known as intellectual property. And the government provides you with some rights to protect them is known as intellectual property rights. So uh, this is the classification of property. You can see here, it has been classified in two classes, tangible and intangible. Tangible property means something you can touch. And intangible means something you cannot touch. So intangible, it is divided in uh, two parts, movable and immovable. It is car and building. And intangible, it is something intellectual property. And uh, the intellectual property is divided into the two parts, industrial property and artistic or literary work. The industrial properties are protected by patents, design, trademark, and geographical indications. And artistic and literary works are protected by copyrights. Now, uh, what are the different uh, importances of IPR? IPR is something used to protect your the intellectual property. And that is why it is more important than the properties you have with you. That is tangible properties. IPR production can be useful to you and uh, it can be the important source of scientific and technical literature based on which you can further investigate the other products and processes. It can be work as a treasure house of scientific creation and invention. It may provide an incentive to individuals for new creations. It can accord due recognition to the creators or inventors. It may ensure the material reward for intellectual property. It make available genuine and original product for the end users. It may avoid duplications also. Like uh, you can see uh, the different duplicate products in the market. So it may avoid the duplication also. It paves way for further discoveries. It stops reinventing the wheel. And it identifies emerging technologies, services, and areas. So these are uh, the most important importances of IPS. Now, what is intellectual property all about? It deals with uh, the design, painting, invention, authorship, laws, copyright, protection, brand, etc., etc. So everything, when come together, it forms intellectual property. And the rights related with these properties is known as intellectual property right. And IP is the creature of uh, the human intellect. 
it comprises of two distinct forms it is literary and artistic work and industrial property so uh, what does literary and artistic work comprise is include books print paintings musical compositions plays movies radios and tv uh, program performance so all these things are the literary and artistic works so these can be copyrighted only you can register the copyright of these things in the case of industrial properties is described the physical matter that is the product of an idea or concept for commercial purposes and these may include and these may protected by the patent trademarks industrial designs trade secrets layout design and geographical indications so now we'll discuss them one by one firstly uh, we'll go through the patents what are they and how important they are as far as the pharmacy is concerned pharmaceutical industry is concerned we'll uh, see in the following sections now patent is a statutory right given to the inventors it is not an absolute right so it is a territorial right the boundaries are defined in this case it is a negative right i'll tell you in for the slide what is negative right is all about now for it is for a limited period of time is granted for limited period of time and it is granted in lieu of sufficient disclosure the inventions like products processes material composition can be patented and if your invention is providing some technical solution to any problem then it can be patented so it is statutory right that means something you own you have right to trade it manufacture it sell it import it but in some special cases government can take this right from you just like in today's scenario uh, it is a pandemic situation so if any vaccine or drug which is patented then government can take over that and can help improve the production of those particular products from other industries also so that is why it is not an absolute right which you can utilize for forever so patent gives right to stop third party involvement for manufacturing offering for sale using it selling it importing it distributing it and licensing it Okay. but it is not an absolute right and whenever required government can take over your patent for the benefit of the end user now patent is a negative right because patent provides the right to the owner to stop the technology manufacture sale use and import the uh, importation from others yes absolutely these pro, uh, rights protect them uh, to manufacture it sell it use it from others but government can take away it okay so patent is not an absolute right because government can use it for research and teaching purposes manufacture it and import it that is why it is not an absolute right it is an statutory right and it is an territorial right also because the boundaries are defined if the patent is filed in india only then it is patented in india you can sell it manufacture it in, uh, in india only so uh, these are some of the very interesting examples i think you all are uh, aware about these uh, examples and if you are planning for uh, 
uh, the registration of any patent, you can go through, uh, go through this website and file your patent. So what are the different criteria uh, which are considered for uh, the patentability? Well, the first criteria is novelty. If your product is novel, then it, it is patentable. Novelty means something not available for the public use in any form. It should be non-obvious also. Non-obvious means something with the inventive steps. Okay. Now, industrial application, it should have some industrial application. And until unless your technology is not having any industrial application and uh, market demand, so you will not be able to patent it. So it should have some sufficient disclosure in the form of uh, repeatability data or reproducibility data you have to provide it uh, during the patent uh, patent registration clarity of claims should be there and it relates to a process or product or both you can file a patent for both product and uh, processes and uh, something which does not fall under the section of three and four of patent act 1970 and section one and subsection 20 of atomic energy act 1962 and the things which does not this uh, do not fall in these sections are described here you can see the contrary natural laws public order, morality laws related to human and animals, discoveries of living and non-living things present in nature, value addition with no beneficial effect, just mixing of two components to get additive effect, a rearrangement of a known device, a method of agriculture or horticulture, a process of medical, surgical, curative, prophylactic diagnosis or therapeutic treatment, plant or animal, whole or in part, a mathematical or business models, algorithms, computer programs, literary or artistic work, method of playing games, and most importantly, all the material associated with the atomic energy. All these things are not patentable. So these are the patentability criteria. Now, trademarks. What does it mean? It is something used to protect any word, name, logo, label, or monogram, or slogan. And it is applied on the article of manufacture of services. And it indicates the origin of goods and services. All these examples are the trademarks of the pharmaceutical companies you can see here Bicon, Sun Pharma, Abbott, Vincera, Intas, Dr. Eddy's, Microlabs, uh, and so on. So, this is how our trademark look like. Okay, so it is generally a brand or logo. Any name which is useful for trade is adopted as mark. Device, symbol, or monogram can also be registered under the trademark. Sales of goods or their packaging can also be registered under the trademark. Combination of colors or even a single color in combination with word or devices can be registered under the trademark. Now, industrial designs, it is something the ornamental or aesthetic aspect of a useful article of industry it gives special appearance differentiate from our current products and it is only aesthetic or visual form of a product not the technical and not distinguishing feature that is trademark if the you have to differentiate your product with some technical denotions then it is patented and uh, some distinguished features 
are used to differentiate the product that is uh, registered under the trademark. But as far as aesthetic or visual appearance are concerned, you register your appearance or design under the industrial design. Now the ornamental or aesthetic aspect of an article consists of three dimensional features such as safe, surface or texture of an article or two dimensional features such as pattern, lines or colors. Now uh, a design makes the product attractive and appealing to uh, the consumers and adds commercial value for that reason. That is why industrial designs are registered. Some of the examples of the industrial design you can see here, you can design a medical device which is already exist. Anything you are doing to improve the appearance or aesthetic feel of any device or any instrument that is registered under the industrial design. Now it is an exclusive right against unauthorized copying and uh, the production under this category lasts for 10 years after which it is renewed for up to 15 years it is meant to protect the external feature of any uh, product now new safes pattern or configuration can be protected under this category the next point is uh, geographical indications GI identifies agriculture, natural or manufactured good that is associated with any territory, any region or locality. So this is the main constant of this uh, registration. Now it possesses special qualities or reputation based upon unique characteristic of the product. Okay. Now GI gives protection uh, to the group of people. It is not an individual right, it is a community right, you can say. Or association involved in the production of the product using traditional skills and knowledge. So once the geographical indications are registered, then whole community get benefited. Otherwise, in the case of patents, trademarks, only the individual or any company get benefited. All right. Here you can see the example of Tirur Betel Nut of Kerala. It is the only drug registered under the geographical indi uh, indication. Otherwise, the other geographical indications have been registered for agriculture based natural or manufactured goods or something uh, related with the spices. The manufactured goods should be produced or processed or prepared in the territory. It is the main constraint and this gives a special quality to the product due to geographical or climatic environment, reputation, specific manufacturing or farming skills, tradition and other characteristics. Okay. Now it consists of the name of the place of origin and originates from a definite geographical territory. Darjeeling tea, Kanchipuram Sari, Kolapuri Chappals, Tirupati Laddu, Nagpur Orange are the other examples of geographical indications. Now, copyrights, it is given for the artistic or literary work. And copyright is a legal term describing rights given to the creator for their literary and artistic work. These works may cover literary works, uh, for example, novel, poem, plays, reference work, newspaper, and articles. It can be uh, any computer programs and databases, films, musical composition, dance, and theoretical productions, any artistic work such as paintings, drawings, photographs, or sculpture, architecture, 
advertisement maps, technical drawings, and manuals can be registered under this category. It is a proprietary right. It comes into the existence as soon as the work is created. Okay, so you need not to go for copyright immediately. You can uh, register copyright after some time also, but once the work comes under the existence, it has been copyright. Okay. Now it protects skills and labor employed by the creator in production of his work. So the message is to stop copying and uh, take the copyright your own creature. Now coming to the Indian patent, uh, sorry, Indian intellectual property law. As far as uh, this these laws are con concerned there are many big and small intellectual property law firms worldwide situated like in india usa uk chicago etc etc and these are providing quality help to inventors and creators of product okay and uh, these are situated to protect your own uh, right so apart from that, there are many attorneys and law firm of intellectual property in India in various states. I'll tell you in the next slide. And in India, intellectual property rights are safely protected and controlled by well-established statutory and judicial framework. Now, Indian intellectual property law that is uh, exclusive right given to a person over the creation of the mind it is a legal right you cannot anyone uh, or cannot claim the same right which you have already taken now it is intangible potential asset of yours monopoly is there and uh, it is negative right that is it prevents others to use his or her creation for a definite time. Now, next is WIPO. It is well-known organization. WIPO means World Intellectual Property Organization. It was established by the WIPO Convention in 1967. It is a specialized agency of the United Nations. It is meant for uh, promoting and protecting the IP throughout the world. Okay. It's headquartered in Geneva, Switzerland. Now the organizational structure in India. Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Department of Industrial Policy and Production govern uh, the production of intellectual property. And uh, Controller General of Patent, uh, Design and Trademark um, is also involved. And you can see here the patent design office offices are situated in Kolkata, Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai. And uh, Kolkata is a headquarter, head office, you can say. And trademark registry, Kolkata, Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai, Ahmedabad. So if you're going for the registration of any trademark then you can visit these sites only and geographical indication registry uh, is done in chennai only and patent information center is situated in rg niipm nagpur a validity of intellectual properties we have uh, discussed about uh, the five types of intellectual properties that are uh, that are uh, directly or indirectly related with the uh, uh, pharmacy profession and uh, if you are dealing with uh, any um, uh, pharmaceutical uh, company so you can patent your product you can um, uh, trademark your uh, sign uh, or slogans you can design and uh, register a design uh, 
your design you can copyright your content and uh, geographical indications uh, can also be registered so patent is given for 20 years and it is renewed for on every year it is mandatory and and uh, the patents are registered under the patent act 1970 which is which was amended in 2005 trademark is given for your whole life and uh, its renewal is uh, required after every 10 years so it is registered under the trademark act 1999 and designs are registered for uh, 15 years and uh, after 10 years the renewal is required and it is only for five years after that and uh, it is registered under the design act 2000 copyright is registered for a period of 60 years in india and uh, renewal is not required here and it is registered under the copyright act 1957 geographical indications are for uh, your whole life and every 10 years you have to renew it it is registered under the geographical indication of codes act 1999 so ips can be seized and can be transferred to a public domain if a patent are not renewed within six months of expiry of the concerned year by passing renewal fee so it is very important to renew your uh, intellectual property else you will lose your property now importance of ipr in the pharmaceutical industry it is uh, very important as far as uh, pharmaceutical industries are concerned and um, it is uh, the area of your prime interest and ipr helps protect the company's invention obviously and it helps promote the healthy competition between two companies and that is fruitful for uh, the economic growth of your country also so it helps protect the company's invest invested time money and effort and promotes industrial development it provides fair and effective incentive for innovative processes okay so you are the inventor so you are liable for uh, you are supposed to gain some profit out of it so uh, these provide the in incentive to you for your betterment for your future and uh, it helps to protect any company against potential infringement obviously if i am willing to uh, breach your patent or your intellectual property then i am liable to uh, liable for the punishment as far as uh, the patent acts are concerned it provides a strong enforcement mechanism for defending infringement in the case of patent patent literature so here the first important point for the pharmaceutical industry uh, for uh, interested in filing or registering any intellectual property that protection of invention obviously after having uh, the property patented you will be able to protect them from any infringement and discovery or product development is the result of extensive research hence its production is very much required so the way to protect is either by getting it patented or under trade secret there are two ways either uh, you will patent it or you will file a trade secret so discoveries can be a reverse engine engineered okay so in that case you can uh, register your intellectual property under trade secret you cannot patent it record it, it is reverse engineered okay 
So a patent gives better protection than trade secret laws. The reverse engineered product has high chance of invention infringement because it is a process dependent uh, production. Whereas patent provides a much more watertight production. Economic growth and competitiveness. Obviously, if you are protecting your uh, intellectual property, then uh, it will be beneficial for the economic growth also. And competitiveness, IPR helps grow the country's economy. It helps inventor gain profit and invest more in research and development. IPR helps grow a competitive market. It awards sole right to the inventors. It gives them privilege of re reaping the profits. You will get more benefit out of it if you're filing the patent of your product. Now, it gives marketing right to solidate to the inventors. The company can earn a lot and reinvest it. The next point is the protection of consumer and families. IPR helps safeguard the interest of the people also. Your people means the end user of your product. The safety and the quality of the products are assured if the product is patented. But it is not uh, possible to control uh, the uh, safety and quality of the product in the case of generic products because uh, some of the companies are uh, very much interested to make more and more profit so they compromise with the safety and quality of the products so it helps the consumer to make the right choice IPs help companies to compete and help reduce the price of the product also. So that, uh, that is why it is very much required. Now the production against the potential infringement as I have already discussed that IPR allows you to take strict action against fake. If you have protected your intellectual property, it helps countries across the globe to ensure safety and the potential infringers who make counterfeit drugs are penalized for fraudulent behavior. So that is why the production of the intellectual property is very much needed. It generates solutions to global challenges. IPR gives you the right encouragement to generate funding. If you are uh, discovering something, you are inventing something and you are filing a patent uh, for that. You are protecting your rights and ultimately you will get benefit out of it. And that will be your encouragement for future research and discoveries. And for uh, based on that particular intellectual property, you will be able to generate more and more funds in future. So it encourages investor for developing new drugs and vaccines. It increases invention and uh, reward entrepreneurs. So the right post is given for investor to keep them motivated. It is also important that they are recognized for their work. If you're having your, uh, your uh, intellectual pro property protected, then you'll be ultimately recognized for that particular work because it is your own right. So it enables a free flow of information. So will, as a normal people or as a citizen of India, will not get any misinformation if you have your uh, intellectual property protected. So it provides a safe channel for sharing and exchange of your knowledge. Okay, so all these points are covered un under the importance of IPR in the pharmaceutical industry. So uh, let me revise it, uh, the protection of invention, economic growth and competitiveness, 
for the protection of consumer and families for the protection against the potential infringement uh, for the generation uh, of solution to the global challenges and for the encouragement of innovation and uh, reward entrepreneurs the production of the intellectual property is very much important now carriers in intellectual properties as you can see here uh, there are three areas science commerce and humanities so everywhere the intellectual properties are used in the field of science engineering medicine dentistry and dentistry pharmacy and uh, science so here in the case of pharmacy we file a patent we protect designs trademark copyright everything we uh, protect so in these cases you can be a patent professional patent attorney ipr consultant ipr value valuation consultant ipr policy and advocacy uh, these are the areas where you can uh, make your career in the field of commerce management economics banking accountancy and cs are the major fields and uh, you can make your career in ipr accounting ipr valuation ipr strategy ipr due diligence ipr management and in the case of humanities as it is uh, uh, related to the territory and different territories history based geography based psychology based socialism and generalism based humanities are there so traditional knowledge knowledges are also involved in this um, in this area so it is something to protect by geographical indication so here you can be a geographical indication agent trademark agent trademark attorney copyright consultant ipr advisor in the field of humanities also now finally i i would like to conclude my discussion that ipr is necessary for pharmaceutical companies to set aside a budget for research and development marketing and legal cost and it is only possible if the companies are frequently filing or protecting their intellectual property it should be utilized for the benefits of patent rights and data exclusivity to compete with generic manufacturers because uh, the competition between uh, the companies and uh, generic manufacturers are, are very much uh, interesting and uh, as far as uh, the competition is concerned you have to be in uh, the market by filing some uh, intellectual property or inventing something new with some new discoveries and invention you can be in the market and you can compete with any company so pharmaceutical companies should have an effective intellectual property strategy that will maximize return on investment and maintain strong patent production promoting innovation is a key to drug discovery and therefore an ipr helps you achieve the goal of having a competitive edge obviously if you have something you in your mind and you are not able to execute it you are not able to gain the profit out of it then it is useless so just go for ipr filing whenever you are getting something new in your mind a developing country may not allow branded profit making countries it is very interesting that uh, ipr filing is very much important for uh, the economic growth but after ipr filing the product cost is uh, very much high so it may not be useful for uh, the developing countries very much useful that is why the developing countries are always oriented toward uh, the generic market rather than uh, the patented market so indian market is still developing and the customers require cost efficient product and high cost uh, not high cost drug 
IPR will help to brand several companies which might not be fruitful for the Indian citizens. Okay, so uh, the local brands in India in the past few years have been gaining an advantage. So it is a uh, point of concern also. This is all about my lecture. And uh, here I would like you to uh, take a pledge that you will celebrate Intellectual Property Day every uh, 26 April if you have gained, gained something from this lecture. And uh, this is my message that I don't copy from anyone else because copying from other sources is a crime and attribute and take permission from the real source. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching.